Hello, I'm Dr. Sri Banerjee, core faculty at Walden University College of Health Professions. In this video, I will be talking a little bit about the Delphi technique. I am 20 years in the discipline of public health. I have um, additionally a background in epidemiology and, and I've been trained in um, being a physician. And so a lot of my examples that um, I will be sharing with you will be a combination of what I have seen and also uh, what I have conducted in research. So before talking about the Delphi technique, of course, I have to refer to the origins of this uh, technique and the inspiration behind the word Delphi. So um, back when I went in Greece about 10 years ago, um, I visited the site of the original oracle and um, this was actually located in Delphi, Greece. And so um, the idea was at this oracle, um, leaders and kings would uh, go to see the future. And so people would be at the oracle um, telling leaders about what is to be happening. Um, and so there was a belief that people needed to visit the oracle. Um, using the inspiration of that story, the idea behind this technique is to understand more clearly um, through the consensus of a group of experts or a panel of experts um, in order to determine what the best course of action is. Now, in public health, some applications of this are, of course, when creating objectives like Healthy People 2030, for instance. There were several working groups um, which were um, creating feedback through panelists and then revising their guidelines accordingly. And this was a iterative process that took a number of years. And so similarly, in public health, white papers um, and whatnot have also similar characteristics. So I'll be going over some of that as well. So going over some of the basic anatomy of the Delphi technique, well, it's as I described already, a group of experts known as panelists that are questions about the issue of interest. And usually the process is anonymous. However, this is not necessarily always the case, but usually you don't want each expert to know what the other says. Um, usually in focus groups, of course, in these sorts of interviews, um, each expert is aware of what the other individual says. Um, the procedure, of course, is iterative in nature, as I described earlier, and the design of subsequent rounds are actually based on some of the summary that has been gleaned from previous group of responses. So moving right along, if we think about the definitions, let's think about basically the technique as I've been described to, describing to you. It refers to the actual method as such. But if we're thinking about the study versus the survey versus the process, well, the study is referring to the research endeavor that is being employed by the Delphi technique. The survey is actually related to the um, actual iterative uh, conducting. Um, so that part is con considered the survey as in any other survey. So in the Delphi process, that covers the overall process. So these are just fine distinctions as you're describing um, the technique. And then if you're thinking about the objectives that the Delphi technique is extremely useful for, well, understanding and assessing the current state of knowledge from a group of experts, that of course is extremely important, especially in the field of health sciences where there's so many different areas and so many different types of subspecialties to try to um, understand. And so improving predictions for possible future circumstances is another extremely useful tool of the Delphi technique. And then resolving controversial judgments, identifying formulating standards for guidelines, for theoretical methodological issues, developing measurement tools, and then finally formulating recommendations 
for action. And so this gets into a little bit of health policy and how to prioritize measures. All of these, in every single step, the Delphi technique is extremely useful. So just in general, if we look at the Nieder, Berger, Spranger article in 2020, very, very helpful article. I encourage each and every one of you to uh, visit this article. Um, uh, some of the concepts that you will find in this presentation is actually um, concepts that have been included within this article. It's in Frontiers in Public Health, so it's open access. So the four basic types based on the technique, um, basic types of objectives are finding consensus, aggregation of ideas, making future predictions, and then determine experts' opinions. So these are the four broad types of objectives. Now, if we think of, um, you know, what are some of the different types of uh, utilizations of the, of the Delphi technique? I already told you about the white paper. That's really important. But, you know, the biggest utility of this technique is the ability to combine personal expertise like for instance personal experience clinical experience experience from seeing patients along with existing research um, meta-analyses clinical trials all of these types of extremely useful research we can combine delphi technique by combining the two so the practicality of research is really emphasized when you use this technique. And so um, you can see more specifically in this table, I'm not going to go through each one of these, but if you look through these, it's actually very useful not only in qualitative research, where traditionally we think of Delphi technique, but also in quantitative research. As we're thinking about the different stages, um, which predictors to include within models, um, even when we're thinking about um, some sort of stepwise regression technique, uh, sometimes it's um, a methodology which has been determined based on expertise and prior knowledge. So if you're thinking about um, and quantitative Bayesian sort of um, ideology where you're using an informative prior to try to um, conduct new research. This is the same type of idea um, where you're trying to use expertise that you have already amassed in order to inform future research. So as it turns out, um, Junger et al. actually came up with a reporting standard. Now, um, each type of study, for instance, meta-analyses have Prisma as a reporting standard guidelines. Um, Credis is one reporting standard that was proposed um, in this one study, in, in this one paper in 2017. And so there are a number of criteria in this first page. I've included five um, criteria, which fall under three broad types of criteria. So um, one is rationale for the choice of the Delphi technique. So talk about, uh, report the justification. Um, why was it used? You know, um, collating expert consultation, um, building consensus, all of these are extremely important. Um, in the planning and processing, um, so it's a flexible method that can really be um, included anywhere um, with respect to research aims. Um, and purposes and modifications can be made. Um, so defining what that consensus is is also an important planning uh, part. Um, so understanding that, you know, how not only how to proceed, but also what are the required threshold to determinate um, the Delphi process, you know, when do you begin, when do you end, things like that. And then the study conduct, um, how informational, how to prevent biases, things like that. So then, of course, you know, interpreting um, and processing of these results are extremely important. Um, so just thinking about reporting standards, there are about eight of those. So um, going through some of those, the purpose and rationale is important. Um, the expert panel, why did you choose the experts that you did? You know, what was your criteria? Um, also, flowcharts help in these types of things, looking at number 11. Um, if you illustrate the stages of the process, um, the preparatory rounds, the preparatory phases, um, the Delphi rounds, the interim steps, these are extremely important. Um, and then, of course, you know, 
uh, results, discussion of limitations, adequacy of conclusions, um, and then finally publication and dissemination. So this is the, in summary, what you would be including in a um, ideal Delphi study and um, the steps that you would be taking in a Delphi process. So in 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 a Delf, in in this technique, I hope um, you have seen how practical and useful this tool is. As um, it's an iterative process where you would um, use um, estimation initially, and then try to determine what the next best course of action is, and understanding how to use that information to guide your research and eventually to guide policy and prioritize policy action and recommendations. So this can apply to any personal objectives that you have created um, surrounding your research, or this can apply to nationally derived objectives from, um, from important uh, documents and Im important objectives like Healthy People 2030. Um, if you get a chance, please uh, visit some of these resources um, that I have introduced into this um, video, and I hope you've found everything here useful. Thank you for listening.